Hello and welcome to Strange Generations. A nightmarish journey through the shadows of America, one generation at a time. This is the conclusion of Hallowed Hollow 1890s. After this, we're going to take a one week break. When we return, we will see what these characters are like when childhood's over and they are in the most horrifying place of all, adulthood. <laughs> but before that, they've got, uh, let's see if they are lucky enough to survive to adulthood. Uh, let's go ahead and meet the players and their characters and then I'll do a quick recap. So let me know who you are, who you're playing and how they're feeling as uh, we enter the end of our showdown with the Earl King, starting with Nick. Hey, once again, all right, I'm Nick, as what was stated, and I am bringing back Brian Kelly, who at this point, um, he is not doing well in terms of his of his head. Um, he, I've decided to that he is now afraid of hounds, or at least the sound of them, um, and he's a little irrational. Um, but other than that, he's going to try as he may to get what, to keep this group alive, at least his brother alive, so we can continue, so he can finish his school. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, uh, hey, to break it to you, you guys do have class tomorrow, so. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. It's a Saturday. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you left on Friday night, so Saturday would be uh, would be the next day. Uh, though now it probably is Saturday because it's so late. And uh, we'll see if you can make it to Sunday. Joining us as well, we have Kat. Hey, I'm Kat. I'm playing young Desdemona Barrow, 11 years old. Um, we, how am I feeling? Well, I was feeling absolutely marvelous very recently because we are having a grand adventure and also i was a little drunk um don't tell papa please at any rate um yes we have were in these sea caves being chased by the earl king and that was a frightfully good time um but then my father has arrived and has taken us all back to barrow house and uh well the good times had to end at some point i suppose Mm. I do not enjoy being home, but well, uh, especially on a stormy night like this, the ghosts do tend to get restless. Mm. Well, I'm afraid home is where you are. We are also joined by Marvin. Hey, so I'm Marvin, and I'm going to be playing Isaac Vorman, the quintessential fat kid of the group. So... <laughs> his vibe right now he finally figured out where his parents are they're out west so all isaac's got to do now is just survive the earthling and this new uh, manor that we're going to don't know what that's going to happen but hey maybe isaac will finally get some answers to his life and then probably join the military oh interesting well we will see what happens there and we are also very happy to be joined by Dallas. Hi, everybody. I'm Dallas, and I'm happy to be uh, playing John Rabbits for at least one more episode. Um, didn't think I would make it actually past the first one, our forest encounter, but, uh, you know, this this game is, is seriously intense, and I'm, I'm loving it. So uh, Rabbits is not loving it at the moment. I mean, literally at the end of the last session, he thought he was, like, getting past this nonsense of like sp spooky things and and otherworldly beings. And then his boss showed up while he was hanging out with the boss's daughter and other people that they probably shouldn't all be together with. So he is really, really freaking out right now, probably more than ever. Um, his worst nightmare all come to being in like one location. He's in a cave underwater level. He's not happy with being in the water at all. Right now he's below the sea level and the other situation on top of it all. So shaking probably literally in his boots. Mm. 
Well, the good news is that you are being taken out of the cave. The bad news is that you are going to have an evening at Barrow House. Hallowed Hollow, a mystery shrouded seaport in foggy New England, is home to many legends. Perhaps none more terrible than the Errol King. Also known as the Elf King of Germanic lore, this supernatural abomination steals the souls of children and pursues them with his monstrous hounds across the night sky in the event known as the Wild Hunt. But four youngsters from Netherfield Academy have learned the Errol King is very real indeed. Wailing tycoon heiress Desdemona Barrow, junior dock worker John Rapitz, clever orphan Isaac Vorn Vorman, and the protective Brian Kelly and his younger brother Connor found themselves marked by the Errol King after stumbling into a ritual conducted by a society of satyrs, an elite secret group of occultists. Now they know the dark truth. The society has been summoning the Earl King and feeding him children from the slums of Hallowed Hollow in exchange for power. And they know the way to stop him, the ghost of pirate captain Baldwin Blake. Now that they've all been captured by Desdemona's father, Captain Rutherford Barrow, and taken to his mansion, Halloween is tomorrow. Now they dine at Barrow House. So, you are all, you are all hauled away by a touring card, taken out through the rainy, windswept woods, and to Barrow House, this humongous manor on a massive estate. Looks very dark, covered in shadow, almost lost in the rain, a giant ship at sea. You are ushered into through the foyer and into the dining room where the table is set for a fairly large dinner party. You are all set down at a uh, settings. Some wonderful gilded cutlery is in front of you. And Mr. Wax emerges along with a bunch of footmen who are bringing out the first course. Mr. Wax being the, uh, the butler. As he's saying, as he's doing this, Captain Barrow takes his seat, not at the head of the table, but next to it. And Mr. Wax says, the appetizer shall consist of steamed mussels in a red wine sauce. Hmm. And the well, shellfish that... is plopped down in front of you. Well, I don't mind, you know, taking a bit of the appetizer, you know, just to be a courteous guest, but why are we here? <laughs> Captain Barrow says, you're here because you have caused us no amount of trouble, and don't you dare touch that food until the guest of honor is here. And... Don't, don't. Put your, take your piggy little fingers and put them away from the food. Mm. Desdemona, my dear, is this, don't! Ugh. Is this really the company you keep? I'm sorry if you, they do not meet your approval, Father. I can make other friends if you so desire. Hmm. Well, they may yet prove useful. Yes, Father. Of course, Father. What do you mean we gotta prove something? Uh, and he like looks at you for a while and he's like, I've seen you before. Yeah. Do you go on? Yeah, I, I, I work for you, sir. And uh, I thought I'd prove enough doing that. Hmm. Well, it seems you, all of you and the rest of you shall do me one more service tonight. Uh, and with that, the doors slam open and Mr. Wax wheels in in a wheelchair, Leander Ashford Honeywell, who is this decayed ancient specimen, 
just covered in wrinkles, a little fringe of white beard still on his chin. He is carrying in his, uh, you know, cradled in his weathered arms, a blunderbuss. And uh, definitely loaded, because he's like cocking it as he's wheeled in. And uh, they bring him to the head of the table. And he's like, he's kind of swerving that blunderbuss around, aiming it at you. Don't you dare go anywhere! You sure that's really necessary? Don't! Stay right where you are! Wasn't sure uh, that movie anyway. Good. Do you realize how badly you have fouled up what took centuries to build? Oh, honestly. Grandpapa, it was not on purpose. Oh, it wasn't on purpose. Exactly. You wasn't or on you. Purpose. We more or less just discovered it on accident. Exactly. And all honestly, Excellent. it's your fault for not protecting the ritual better. No, oh, don't, ha- don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, don't, don't, don't provoke him. Oh. How dare you? Now you've provoked him. Uh-oh. I worked so long and so hard to create a partnership with the Ale King. Do you know the effort it took to make such arrangements? And yet, you children jeopardized it all in one night. And now, if this cannot be undone, Perhaps I will. However, my genius has granted us a solution. As he's saying this, Mr. Wax takes like a carving knife out of his coat. Uh, Honey was like, don't move. This is for your own good. The butler here will collect a small portion of your skin and blood. Then we'll bake it into a cake and we'll serve that to the Arrow King. It will mollify him for now and next year we'll give him two children from the gutter. And then our arrangement will perhaps continue. So. Grandpa Paul, would it suffice if he just ate me? I really don't mind. Oh, Desdemona. Truly, you have a noble heart. But I won't see it wasted. The Earl King shouldn't dine on such fine flesh. Let him feast on the spawn of the gutter instead. Do any of you... Oh? You disagreeing? Well, you're, you're feeding him poor rations. Maybe he's upset about that. Do you ever think about that? Hmm. I assure you, poor children taste just as sweet as the wealthy ones to someone like him. Uh, very gamey and gritty. Not to the Earl King's palate. Anyway... Hmm. Who's going first? I shall. Uh, Captain Barrow at this point is like, Desdemona, my my dear, perhaps, perhaps only a drop or two from you will be needed. Let let the others suffer the most. I do not know. Would, would a drop or two really suffice, the Earl King, Father? It seems as though it would require the same amount of flesh from all of us. Not mm. that I mean to disagree with you, of course. But Honeywell. I'm sure that you would hate to see me get eaten. Honeywell's like, enough blathering. Mr. Wax, start slicing. Uh, so Wax says over to you with a knife and like a little, you know, silver bowl. And he's like, um... I do apologize, Mr. Sparrow. This uh, will just take a moment. It's 
It will indeed hurt. Um, I'd imagine rather extensively, but do what you have to. Yes. Do I have to roll uh, a grit to not pass out or something? Well, he's he's raising the knife um, at this point, and then Honeywell says, "Wait!" and like slams his blunderbuss down on the table. And he's looking at all of you, and then he's like, "Where's the skull?" The skull. I that, know what you're talking about? That old pirate skull. Which one of you took it? I don't know what I you're talking about. Here. I wasn't even near it. Oh, you wicked little children have greedy hands. One of you must have taken it. Um, you want, sorry, you can Michael, search me if of, you want. Out of character, I don't know if I took it or if the ghost took it. Yeah, I don't think, I think it was indeed the ghost who took it. Mm -hmm. We can check the tail of the tape if we need to later. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the ghost. Yeah, Starby Dearborn, who has not yet materialized, does indeed have it. Um... Grandpapa, none of us have that skull in our possession. It is being held by another who is quite immaterial at the moment. That's really necessary. Honey, Honeywell, like, puts his hands on the handles of his wheelchair and starts trying to push himself up while still holding on to the gun. Um, and as he's getting more and more angry, there is a terrible crash of thunder from outside. Something strange joins the ceaseless pelting of rain on the window. The baying of ghostly hounds. Mm. The howls rise in pitch, shifting into the lilting tones of a pipe organ. And then the shrill cries of frightened children. Leander Ashford Honeywell pauses in his chair, clutching his blunderbuss. His blunder eh? He manages, just before the massive window above the dining room shatters. The hounds descend, flying in amongst the falling rain. Giant luminous shapes, at once skeletal and plump. Hard to make out their faces. But they only look like dogs some of the time. You can make out human features amongst the glowing green fur. Children's faces, contorted and aged and broken. They crash down to Honeywell as his blunderbuss thunders. So at this point, it's total chaos in that dining room. Uh, wax and the butt, wax and the servants, the captain scrambling for cover. These dogs are eating Honeywell alive as he's trying to like flailing around with his loaded blunderbuss. And uh, you all hear Darby Dearborn whispering, "Chums, I think it's time we left." Yep, good man, Darby. Yep. Let's get out of here. Also, I have the intention of running right now. Yes. All right. Well, is... retreating to a better position, maybe. So, I think if you guys don't have any special plans for the escape, someone's going to have to roll flight. Mm -hmm. uh, my main plan for the escape is to um, uh, move to my character's room. Okay. Well, that's, I think, um, in the mansion's layout. Or, um, actually, I would say your room is probably pretty close by. Yeah. So, yeah, you could definitely, like, start running there. But there's, like, these, you know, the, the Earl King's Hounds are all over the place. So it's definitely going to take a roll. Sure. So it's a flight roll? Mm -hmm. Uh, Unless you can think of something else you would use. No, I think flight is pretty logical here. Until we can get through a doorway. Uh, I've got a 12. And they had a thing. I rolled a d12 and I added it a one, so that's a 12. Right. Okay, it doesn't explode. It does not explode, I'm just at a 12. All right, I would say you make it, yeah, to the doorway uh, or the hallway, the corridor, and you're like dashing through, making it out of there safely. Um, but you do have to like weave around through some, uh, some of these hounds as they're like falling upon the servants, upon uh, maybe some of the Pinkertons who went inside there as well. But yeah, you do make it out. How about everybody else? What's everybody else doing? Oh, she was hoping everybody else was going to follow her. <laughs> <laughs> I, could I sort of grab grab Connor and just sort of try and bowl my way through to the other side? Uh, like, okay. just not really looking. I'm not actually looking at the hounds. I'm just sort of like rushing towards what I the direction of the door that I that I saw. 
and so I'm hoping to do this as a brawn. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. You, you're using the protective one because you're protecting yes. Connor. Okay, mm -hmm. let's give that a try. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's finally a good roll. Um, plus the three for protecting would be a 14. Ooh, all right. You grab him, you rush through, maybe like a hound kind of skitters into your path, its claws clicking on the, uh, the marble floor there. And you just like, with your fear, your need to protect your brother, you just, um, I'm trying to think of a term from football, but I don't know any. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you barrel yeah, right through and make it to the I don't corner. I know either, yeah. Blitz. <laughs> you blitz <Yes>. on. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> All right. Um, how about let's check in with Rabbits and then uh, Isaac. I was going to try to run. Um, I rolled a one. Okay, on a, cool. On a D4 because I have a D4 for flight. Um, so. Uh, well, give yourself an adversity token. Yeah, got it. I think here's what happens. You try and you were kind of near the edge of the table. You're trying to like skirt around um, Leander Ashford Honeywell as he's being like disemboweled by these hounds, but his hand like reaches out and grabs onto your ankle mm, okay. and holds you in like a death grasp, and you actually trip and fall down. Desperate hope, got it. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't want to. He's outlived his years for sure, but he just doesn't want to die. Uh, what is Isaac doing? All right. Uh, do I see Mr. Rabbit's getting grabbed? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, we all know, well, if you've watched this series before, that Isaac is not too keen on Mr. Rabbit. But, still in the heat of the moment, can't leave him behind. So, he's going to try and get, get Rabbit's out of there. All right. Got to protect your friends. Acquaintance. <laughs> your acquaintance. Well, yeah, it's going to try and save rabbits. Okay. How do you think you would uh, you would do that? I wonder, is that blunderbuss on the floor? Uh, Yeah, I would say so. I think Honeywell probably dropped it as he was being mauled. Okay, Isaac has no idea how to use a gun, but he's going to try and shoot the guy to get him off of rabbits. Ooh, boy. All right. Would this be fight or brains? Hmm. I'll, I'll let you decide. What, what, what do you think is the stat you would use for this one? Brains. How hard is it? Just point, click. I don't know how to use a gun. <laughs> Just point the shooting end to where it didn't click, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he had it, like, you know, cocked and ready, so... Um, all right, go for go for brains. All right, so and I think this is a protective action as well. Yes, you're saving rabbits. All right, so plus three to it. Okay, that's a ten altogether. Ooh, okay. I was hit the difficulty pretty, maybe like a five or six, because like you're just firing a blunderbuss at point blank point blank range. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you like expertly cut this ghostly hound down the middle, and. Uh, Rabbits is saved. I extend a hand to pull my... Come on, Mr. Rabbits. We're all getting out of here today. All right. All right. I take the hand, but pretty much prop myself up. There's no way you could lift me. Uh, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the feeling's mutual. No way you could probably lift me either. With that, I think you guys make it into the corridor. Yeah. And then... Desdemona. Okay. Hey, uh, Michael, I can't remember what the Hand of Glory does. Oh, it can, like, unlock doors. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice it's one, for unlocking think. doors, thank you. Yeah, it could also, like, lead to stealth, like it can freeze other people. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need to, like, stealthily go somewhere, kind of hide you from view. All right, so Desdemona, uh, you said you're taking them to your room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What does that uh, What does that look like? Uh, it's honestly kind of austere because so many of her childhood possessions were destroyed, but she replaced them all with books. 
Hmm. So like, whereas a normal little girl's room would have stuffed toys on the shelves or, or various other things, like it's just books, like so many books that she's got in there. It's like, she pretty much lives in a library with a princess canopy bed. Hmm. And okay. also like a, a whole chest full of strange arcane objects that she's been stealing away over oh. like, the last couple of years. Interesting. Um, so I would say Connor starts like wandering around looking at all the book spines and being like, whoa, you have like the entire uh, dime novel library. I mean, it's a rather modest collection still at this point. It should be much larger by the time I'm an adult. Still, she says yeah. as like, there's like 10 bookshelves in this room. <laughs> Golly, this is like a, a regular library. Yes, but it doesn't require a ladder yet, so it's fine. Um, we should look into doing something to protect ourselves in here. Um, something against those spirits. She like goes over to like various books of the arcane and starts flipping through them madly to try to find the uh, the right thing. Uh, Con Connor, if you could be a darling, go to that chest there and find the chalks. They contain various holy relics ground into them that that should help hmm. um all right i'll do i'll, I'll give it a little uh look see uh so as you're doing this darby also materializes once more he's just like maybe he never really went away he just floated in right after you um he's also looking incredibly nervous and he's holding uh the skull of captain barrow uh the skull Right. How do we use that? Well, I've been um, talking to him, and he actually needs just a little bit more than the skull to uh, to appear, to manifest, mm -hmm. is the word I think that is most suitable. He needs his cutlass. Does he Doesn't know matter. where that might be? I think he does. You see, uh, Des Desi, your ancestor recovered it from the beach after that battle that was the end of Captain Blake. And he took it here, and right now it's very close by. It's simply in the basement. She, the book that she's currently reading, she just slammed shut. We don't go in the basement. Nobody ever goes in the basement. Not not at night. Mm. Well, I think that's why your ancestors put it there. They really don't want anybody finding the cutlass because it could lead to Captain Blake in a fashion coming back. And they don't want that, but I think that's precisely what we want. Yes, but the teeth are in the basement. The teeth? Yes, the teeth. It's... Nobody understands it. Nobody that's ever seen it has lived. But it's down there, waiting. People mm. say its whole face is nothing but teeth. Ooh. Well, it's either deal with that or deal with the other king. I don't know why I that accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we gotta bring the Irish back. <laughs> gotta bring the Irish back, yeah. <laughs> I assure you, Brian, that everything that I've ever heard about this thing makes the Earl King seem like a lovely dinner companion in comparison. Mm. Still, if it is guarding something, that would certainly explain its presence. Mm. Perhaps this can help, she says as she holds up the Hand of Glory. Um, at Ooh. least to disguise our presence. That Rather gruesome, isn't it? Oh, go, sorry, go ahead, Isaac. Yeah, that could definitely help, but thing is, uh, no offense, Desdemona, but is your father going to be any more of a problem? If he lives, then probably yes, I should imagine. Yeah, just kind of sorry for the way he treats you. Well, he's my father. He has every right to treat me however he feels like. Mm. That's not true, says Connor. If he is ever rude to you, Miss Barrow, or what? If he's ever rude to you, Desi, I'll knock his block off. No offense, little brother. 
but uh, I think you need to, to gain a little muscle before you, that happens. <laughs> Still, I suppose it is better to... She passes out. Uh-oh. Oh, Connor's very freaked out. Oh, quick, put her on the bed! Um, I don't know if any of you guys brought smelling salts. Why would we have smelling salts? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. 13. Uh, you, can probably find, you can probably find some in her room without any I, problems. I, I pulled a, the the rusty smelly fish hook out of my backpack and wave it under her nose. Yeah. See if that works. Oh, sorry, my heart got beating too fast thinking about the thing in the basement. Uh, oh, there's a door not way. too far from here. We do have to pass Bianca's room on the way, though. Who's Bianca? Your sister, right? Yes, my little sister. Uh, should all right. Large, should it? What? She should hopefully be asleep. I, I certainly hope that she's asleep. Darby uh, says, well... Oh, go ahead, Isaac. Uh, sorry, I keep talking at the same time, but what happens if she's awake? Well, she'll get underfoot, at minimum. I should imagine she'd cry, rather like to watch us get eaten by the Earl King. Hmm. Oh, it's your entire family like that. Okay. <laughs> well, not my ma. Uh, announcements. My ma's actually very nice, but she's currently in a family way, so I'd imagine she's probably resting. <laughs> Darby says, well, I suggest we hurry. You see, when the Earl King's about, all the other uh, ghouls and goblins start to wake up too. It's sort of, um, it's like when a rock's thrown into a pond, all the fish get stirred up. And also I do hate to say this, but I think he's gaining on us. Uh, crap. Well, then she, uh, she lights the, the hand of, uh, the hand of glory up to help with the sneaking. We should away to the basement then. Right. Before we go, is there anything I can use to, like, reload this thing? And Isaac holds up the blunderbuss. I do not have gunpowder in my room. Yeah, I don't think we have anything in here to really do that. Um, just maybe you can use it as a bat or a bludgeoning object. <laughs> Yeah, sure. That'll work out great. There might be barrels of the stuff down in the basement. As I said, I do not go down there. <laughs> Nobody goes down there if they know what's good for them. Even the servants are reluctant to go. I think it would well, be helpful to, to block the door before we go. Mm -hmm. That's a good we'll point. Do the, the door to the basement? No, to your room. So we can, we're can. we leaving through another entrance, I'm guessing. We came in, or no, it was only one way in. One I way suppose, out. well, Michael, there's probably a way of going out of her window down to another area and then back into the basement. Uh, you could. The problem is, you do have to go through Bianca's room to do that. Right. So I think that's the, that's the route you're taking there. All right. So, are we? Uh, is that what we're thinking? That you want to barricade the door to my room as a red herring, and then we sneak through another way, or we can simply just go out into the hall with this hand of glory here masking our way? Oh, I didn't know it would take care of everything. Okay. I mean, that's it's for sneaking, right? It's not going to burn forever. That's true. You have like five, you know, five fingers, and then it's gone. Oh yeah. boy. Well, oh, okay, so it bars the way from all like apparitions, not just the one in the basement, but like these hounds and everything as well. Right. Oh, okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. Then by all means, yeah, light it and let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys are like slip out the window, kind of go along to the side of the house, and then pop in another window into Bianca's room. So all you able to do that, uh, I don't need to roll for it. It's just you know it's wet, it's muddy, but. You have like the house to kind of steady yourself and you're just kind of walking on the ground going over okay, a if we're floor going, level sill. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do it that way, then I don't think we need to use the hand of glory. 
Mm. Well, the, the hand of glory was more for if we went through the hall, or mm. are you saying that it has to be a combination of the two? Uh, I think no matter where you go, like okay. the Earl King's Just... hounds are going to be able to follow you. Okay. But yeah, the hand hounds. of glory, yeah, the hound of glory will delay them, and they're ghosts too. So. Fair. Okay. God. So we're going through Bianca's room. Okay. Understood. You pop into Bianca's room and. Uh, well, she's oh. horrible, but she's only five. Well. Five-year-olds can be terrible. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what happens. You stumble into a room of lace and silk with cloying pink stripes up the walls and a matching carpet. Toys are everywhere. A palatial dollhouse occupies a quarter of the room, packed with a small army of figurines set amongst the floors or lying on the ground. Stuffed animals lay in a huge, unruly pile on another. Teddy bears, the button eyes, rabbits, and more. A toy box reveals a number of clockwork entertainments. Sitting on the bed is Bianca Barrow, a dark-haired little girl in an elaborate nightgown and robe. She hops up and down on the bed. Hello there, she waves to you. You want to play with my toys? The baby doll in her hands swivels its head and looks at you without her help. Oh, hell no. <laughs> or maybe they want to play with you. My goodness, oh. Bianca, if you've summoned a demon... I'm going to be very cross with you. You mean to tell me that's something she does regularly? It's something she theoretically wanted to do. I'm not theoretically theoretically doing anything. This just sort of happened. And uh, with that, the giant teddy bear in the corner like stands up and just like walks over and goes behind you guys. Uh, we, should, we should probably go, right? We should probably run, yes. Bianca's like, mm, no. Why don't you stay here? I'm I was I was I'm awful lonely without you, Desi. I well, want you to stay and play. I had to go to school though, don't you understand? That's something I had to do. Mmm. Poo on school. Considering your lack of the grasp of the English vocabulary, I would imagine that would be your opinion about it. Well, um, you are staying right here with all of your new friends. Why don't you introduce them to me? And I'll introduce you to all of my friends. Teddy, you should have them sit down. And this teddy bear is going to try and, like, put its big arms on all of you and, like, shove you to the floor. A cuddly hug with some muscle behind it. <laughs> I'm going to try to escape from yeah. the cuddly hug. Yeah, let's try and see. We need to go over time, right? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if you're trying to break out, why don't you give me a roll with grit? With grit. Right. I was, I was hoping to dodge it before it even had its mitts on me, but I'll do grit. My hey, I finally got a failure. Oh, there's no help in this one. All right. So I think that's two I, adversity tokens. I got a five. I don't know if that's good. I think a five would do it. I only got a three, so I highly doubt that that I did it. Okay, how did Brian do? It doesn't work the same as D&D, &D, but I got a natural 20. Hey. Okay. Well, it um, does because you get to roll it, it again. Yeah, 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 go ahead and roll it again. Okay. Is, <laughs> I got to think of some... Okay, you go ahead. 13. With another 13, I would help. There you right. go. Okay, so, so that's it's total... 33. Yeah. yeah, that score exists, I think, in this game. Something. Oh, it does. It does. But, yeah, something close to that, right? The scores go up. So. Yes. If if we're adding protective to, to as well, it would be thirty six. <laughs> wow. All right. Um. You like lively slide your way out from under this teddy bear. You get Connor out of there too, safely extracting him from the bear. Um. Just use some other bonus as well. Let's say, let's see. Oh, I would say you head, um, you end up close to the wall and you notice there is like a, um, a pop gun. One of those, you know, has like a little wooden plug on a string and you can like pump it up and then fire and make a loud banging noise. <laughs> It'd be useful if you're dealing with toys, like right next to you. Okay. So uh -huh. the rest of you guys, you're sitting there. The bear shoved you down uh, near a little like tea party table. 
and a bunch of um, some dolls come walking out from amongst her collection bearing uh, miniature tea service stuff. And Bianca hops I down skip. and goes over to join you. Oh, Isaac, you made it out? Yeah. I oh, got yes. Right. So you did. You like just barely did it. Um, you roll away from the bear and you kind of like stumble over uh, right next to it. And you're near kind of the, the toy box. All right. So Bianca's like, now, now, sit down. We're going to have a tea party. Listen, Bianca, I'm certain this will be a very lovely tea party, but Grandpa just got ripped apart by hounds. And unless you're very fond of the idea of being ripped apart by hounds, you'll let your big sister go do what she needs to do down in the basement. Mm, poo on hounds. Well, I don't rather enjoy them either, Bianca, but nevertheless, they are going to kill all of us if I don't go do something about it. Certainly you if, understand that. If they get here, I will tell them to go away. All right, Desdemona, why don't you roll a charm? Okay. There's no arguing with a toddler. Just a... <laughs> uh, 18. Well, she is five, so. Yeah, not quite a toddler, but still very hard to argue with a five-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Do you know what Do it I... looks like when a person's ripped apart by a hound, Bianca? Do you want to know? Shall no. I describe it to you? Have you no. ever seen a man scream as his intestines are pulled out through his bloody mouth? Desi, you're being mean to me. You're right, and I'll be meaner to you if you don't let me up and down into that basement immediately. Oh. I can be very cruel to you, sister, as you well know. All right. So she nods at um to the, the teddy bear, which kind of like releases its grip and lets you slip away. And she's like, mm, you can go, but I want your friends to stay and have tea with me. At this point, I will grab the gun and just be like, all right, lass, you want your little toys to to continue to live, I would let us go, or else I'm going to be using this here. Um, Bianca's like, no, you mustn't. Um, and then she, she looks over the toy box and says, Jack, get him. And a Jack in the box. Um, you hear that do to do to do to do to do to do going by real fast. It bursts out and this weird Jack in the box gesture headed, um, Clockwork toy bounces straight for you. Oh boy. Um, so unless someone wants to intervene, I think you're going to have to defend yourself with the, with the pop gun. Demonic Jack in the box? I don't know what I can do against <laughs> that. <laughs> Ryan took my gun, so. Let's see. No, I didn't take your gun. I took the pop gun. Oh, I still have my gun. Okay. Yes. I got an idea then. Oh, okay. But it doesn't involve him protecting Brian. Hmm. All right. Well, let's have um, let's have Brian roll to use the pop gun or whatever else he's planning to do against this Jack in the Box. Then we'll check in on Isaac and then see how Rabbits will escape this uh, this this tea party. Yeah. Unless you want to protect him, Mr. Rabbits. I can't get to him. I'm I'm locked down by the bear. Dang. He, the bear let him go. Let you guys go, I believe. Uh, let nope. Only let oh, Desi no. go. Oh, right. Yeah. He's I, still I, being pulled, I pulled older sister scare the psychic child. Right. <laughs> which, by the way, she's not really happy that her sister's manifesting her dad's psychic powers, but, you know, what are you going to do? Psychic powers now? What is with this family? She didn't say that aloud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining that's how she got them, because Imogen's I mean... certainly not... <laughs> Not any sort of magical powers. I mean, I can tell by the demonic toy brigade trying to kill us that, yes, what is with this family? Alright, so I guess I will sort of I guess it would be a fight roll? Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. Tempted. Um, let's see. Boop. Okay. Um, be a total of five. Hmm. If it okay. does, if, I, if that counts as a lose, I can, I would add plus three to the negative to, to bring it like. Yeah, I think, I think a five is not going to do it and eight would just do it. Okay. I, it says I still lose the roll, but I could reduce it to a minus one. Um, this is for tough. So. 
Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so your move is that you would, you spend the adversity token, you lose the roll. Uh, it just says if I lose a combat roll, I, I uh, add plus three to the negative. Okay. I, I still lose the roll, but I, but I could reduce it to. Right. A, okay. A I see. One. So be careful. All right. Not too badly. Okay. So I think what happens is uh, you fire, and what's weird is like as you fire the pop gun, just like makes a you know makes a bang noise, the cork pops out, but it is as if the jack in the box is actually shot by a real gun, and part of its you know porcelain grinning face is like blown away, and you see clockwork pieces go everywhere, uh, but it is still alive and hopping. And it doesn't quite because you you uh, gave it that good glancing shot. It doesn't like tackle you and destroy you, but it does like circle its um its weird slinky body. Uh, I know slinkies weren't invented yet. <laughs> around one of your legs and is like trying to hold you in place. So it's like tugging at you. Okay. And Bianca's like, stop hurting my toys. This is not fair. I told you you this would happen. All you had to do was let's go. Okay, let's check in on Isaac. Yeah, unless uh, you want to go first, Dallas. No, 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 you're up. All right. What looks like the most, I don't know, expensive, loved toy in Bianca's room? Oh, Does man. Have... Hmm. Does she have something like on a special shelf or something? Yeah, probably. Uh, I would say unicorn, but I don't think unicorns are that popular with kids until uh, a little bit later, maybe. Um, I think it's like, I think it's like a, like a porcelain fairy. You know, very delicate on sort of a, a stand up on a shelf. No problem. I'll ask Desdemona. Desdemona, is that her favorite toy right there, that porcelain fairy? I mean, I think she rather values it, yes. Good. I'm going to grab it and point the blunderbuss at it. Oh, man. And go, Bianca, let us go, or I'm going to break this. No, 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 no. If you break Miss Fairy, you will be in so much trouble. Well, you're in so much trouble right now by not letting us go. Let us go. I'll put the fairy down, and maybe we'll play with you later when we don't have hounds trying to kill us. Mm. All right, Isaac, you're going to have to roll charm. Hey, and that is my d20. So, uh-oh, um, four. Oh, no, no. five, plus one. So what would I need to do this? Because I've got two adversity yeah, tokens. Okay. Um. I would say, let's see. I think it's not going to be a total victory either way here. But if you spend them, I think she'll start getting her toys to like stand down at least. Okay, I'll spend them then. Make it a okay. seven all together. All right. So she's like, don't hurt Miss Fairy. And the uh, Jack in the Box unentangles itself from Brian's leg and the teddy bear pulls back its arms, letting rabbit stand up. Good move. Mm. And uh, so, rabbits, as you stand up, you're the closest to the door. So you actually hear uh, the howling of the hounds. You can hear their claws on the floorboards coming closer and closer. I'm still holding the stall up. Um... What's what's the sorry? What's the sister's name again? Bianca. Uh, Bianca. Bianca, we have to go, and if we don't, we will die. But your bear and some of your toys can never really die. Do you think you could have them? hold off the hounds so that we can actually 
possibly play later. Hmm. She's like, her eyes go pretty big. You promise? It's the best I got right now, kid. Hmm. She considers it for a little bit, and then she's like, hmm, okay. I guess they still get to play, sort of. And uh, as she's saying this... The bear back together, I promise. <laughs> as she is saying this, something heavy and sharp slams into the door. Some splinters fly. You can see it's, like, breaking open. And there's the hound's uh, snarling face coming through. I think, I think Brian, you're... You've been traumatized before by them, right? So I think you got to make, make a grit roll. Oh, boy. The classic sanity check to see how you're doing here. Now, are the hounds between us and the basement right now? Um, there is another door to Bianca's room, and she can kind of slip out the back. Uh, I rolled an 11. Uh, oh. That's pretty good. Yeah, I would say it's not too hard for you to hold together at this point, so I would say maybe like a 5 or a 6 would have done it, so you're, you're, you're pretty good. Okay. But you do see that I'm sort of a little bit on the paler side. <laughs> oh boy. All right, come, Bianca, you'll have to come with us. I don't want you here in this room when these hounds arrive. Mm -hmm. No, that's uh, just toys, yeah. Uh, Bianca's like, I don't want to go anywhere. It's past my bedtime. I should be asleep. Oh boy. One time a kid actually wants to piggyback. Okay. Ooh. He does give very good piggyback rides. I do like a piggyback ride. Okay. In here. I'll even give you back your doll. Oh. Just pretend this is a doll. <laughs> and you can wear your favorite princess hat. Okay. Well, she's very happy about that. She puts the big old, like, tall princess hat on her head. Uh, the conical little pointy hat, and then she hops on to Ravitz's back. Just as the door smashes down, and the first of these demonic hounds bursts inside. Uh, I'm doing like it. <laughs> I would say the teddy bear leaps in the way and like tackles the first one. Uh, the next one, like an army of dolls swarm over it. Uh, so there's this this crazy toy hound battle sprawling on through the bedroom. I think one of the hounds is gonna make it through. It like hops over the chaos, lands on the bed, and now it is threatening all of you as you rush to the door. Darby? Yes, sir? This might be a good time to use Darby, yeah. I know you don't like to harm anybody, but buddy, we need you on this one. All right. I don't Darby think he's going to feel it much. Um, I'm going to ask him to use his burst of energy from his hands to sort of see if he can uh, push back the hound or possibly stop it altogether. Absolutely. Um, and that's that's the one you're in control of, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so you used... Right now you have three energy tokens left. Um, three left, gotcha. So, yeah. so Dallas, what, what does this look like as he uses these, his energy blasts to uh, defeat this particular hound? Um, this one's even bigger than before because last one was sort of like the, like he charged up and like, like let it out, like, ah, and it just like cut the hole through the wall. But this one, the hound, he doesn't let it go until like the hound's almost on him because he's probably not really wanting to do this. When he realizes it's last second, it's even maybe stronger than before. Um, still gentle enough not to harm others in the room because Darby's gentle, but, uh, you know, enough to hopefully hold back the hound. All right. Yeah, the hound is like blasted off of the bed, hurled across the room, and you guys escape and make your way into the corridor. corridor. From there, the steps kind of uh, head downwards, sort of a squarish spiral pattern, and then you reach the door to the basement. Bianca says, oh, the basement, we're not allowed down there. 
You're gonna get in so much trouble. I'm already in so much trouble, Bianca, so it doesn't really make much of a difference if I'm in more of it. Um, is the door to the basement locked? Um, I mean, I would say it is, but the Hand of Glory can open it right up. Okay. Yeah. I shall use the Hand of Glory to open the basement door. Okay. One of those, uh, one of those flames just puffs out on the finger and the door swings open. So, there's a narrow pathway of light, uh, or there's, um, sorry, a set of stairs leading down, some light coming in through some distant, uh, distant windows. Unfortunately, a lot of water damage has gone on here, and the rain outside is making it pretty bad. So the water is, like, up to your ankles, and just, uh, Getting worse and worse as you go along. Places are hacked. Hasn't experienced. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting, um, so as you start making your way through this, like, more and more flooded basement, you pass just stacks of, uh, crates, ornaments, strange artifacts, all lost and left in shadow. Darby is, like, flitting around trying to find the uh, the cutlass. And then, as you keep on going, this basement does seem unnaturally large, too. You're just sort of walking around, splashing your way through. It's getting worse and worse. In fact, Rabbits, I would say, as the water is getting, like, yeah. <laughs> further and further up, I think you're going to have to make a grit check, because you, you said you had a fear of drowning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it gets past the knees, uh, I'm... Uh, basement shouldn't be flooding this much. This has to be some sort of super that's natural amazing. influence. Doesn't it flood off? No, it doesn't usually flood at all. That's my whole point. Mm. Hmm. Rabbits, how'd you do with that uh, grid roll? That was amazing. I rolled the net 20. Okay, you can go ahead and roll it again, I guess, to explode. Plus 15. Wow. That's probably going to be my best of the night. Uh, a grits, grits and D20 for me, so uh, yeah. I, will, I will... That's my best roll yet of all game, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, you hold together so well that... You see at the far end of this basement, there's another door. Looks ancient, dust-covered, hasn't been used in so long. All right, my focus is that way, and I'm just like, Desdemona, could it be that way? I would hope so. She's like, keeps looking around nervously. Mm -hmm. Really listening. Mm. Okay. When the teeth arrive, you're supposed to hear them before anything else. So she's listening. Well, you do hear something else uh, as you guys make your way to the door. Not the teeth just yet. Instead, Desdemona, you see, you hear someone else splashing around in there with you. And then Bianca says, Daddy! Or wait, no, too, too modern. Uh, Papa! Or maybe it would be a pater and mater kind of scenario for them. Well, I say mama and papa. So. Yeah, papa, papa is probably the best option there. Papa! And with that, uh, Captain Barrow, like, kind of pushes his way around one of these uh, stacks of crates and joins you. Hello, Papa. Desi? Yes, Fa. Yes, Papa. What are you and your friends doing here? You know you're not allowed in the basement. I know I'm not allowed in the basement, but it's the only way that I'm going to protect my own life, Papa. It's something mm -hmm. that must be done. There's another way to protect your life. You could have allowed yourself to be sliced a little bit and turned into a cake. I was perfectly willing to have that happen. But it didn't, did it? No, because those beastly dogs arrived, Papa. I couldn't do anything about it. Well, that's mm. your way, Desi, isn't it? Something goes wrong and it's always, it's not my fault. I couldn't have done anything about it. But if that was the case, then how come this sort of thing always seems to happen to you? No, Papa. Possibly because I'm cursed. Mm. 
Desi, I think I might have you make a grit roll because isn't mm. you're you're afraid yeah, of your father? Yeah, her fear is her father. Yeah, and he's he's laying down some pretty mean paternal. Uh... I have a seven. Okay. That's what I got. Uh, I think it's a little, maybe a little bit below. So yeah, yeah. this definitely is hurting you. I, I, I'm trying my best, Papa. I, I'm not like you or, or Bianca. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like that. I, she like falls to her knees <laughs> and mm. starts coughing. Well, Desi, the truth is you could be like us, but you never had the strength. I think now you might, though. Now's the chance. Tell me, do you really care for these other friends here? These other children? Considering she failed her grit roll, she's going to kind of do what her dad wants her to do. Sorry. Nah. Okay. Uh, I know that the only thing that matters to me is the family, Papa. Oh, come on. And Desdemona, we're your friends, right? You don't have to listen to him. He's a jerk anyways. You portly pig boy, will you cease your prattle? No, because I know it annoys oh. you. Ugh. It certainly does. Desi? Yes, your okay. friends are not the proper sort of people. And what's the deal? And what gives you the right to say that? I am a barrow. And? Is that not enough? He is my well, apparently father. it gives you enough to be an asshole. Please, please don't speak to my father that way. Desi, your friends have some naughty tongues. Yes, Papa. Hmm. I was thinking there might be another solution. We could just pacify the Earl King, like Honeywell said, and then feed them to other children from the shallows next year. But I think if I give him your friends and maybe the spirit of that uh, that troublesome boy from last year or so, perhaps he'll spare you. Certainly he doesn't have to take all of them, Papa. He could leave Connor alone, yes? Connor's like, Desi, please, you can't you know this isn't right. You shouldn't take any of us. And this whole, this whole wretched business of kidnapping and murdering children, it must end. But I'm scared and, of him. We're all uh, scared, but that doesn't mean we have to let fear rule us. And I think right then is when you start hearing uh, the chattering of the teeth. And you can see Barrow gets like, he's freaked out too. Uh, you hear that, you know, that rapid, terrible clicking. And he starts like spinning around. Um, and he says, I think you need to stop this, this mad quest to find the Cutlass or, or whatever you're looking for. We'll get out of here. We'll treat with the with the Earl King and and make the arrangements. Um Papa, and he like no oh, go reason. ahead, Desmond. Papa, there's no reason anybody has to die. If we take care of this cutlass, I, I'm I'm certain that everything will be fine. It would mean that the contract we established between society and the Earl King is gone. Which would mean that our fortunes would decrease. Not by that much, I'm certain. When you have as much money as we do, every bit counts. Well, that's simply balderdash, Papa. Honestly. Mm. You do know that one of the deadly sins is greed. Papist, papist nonsense. Oh really? You're gonna you're gonna be blasphemous now. <laughs> uh, no offense, but you're not really going to convince Papa of something by invoking the Pope. I mean, the Pope is a <laughs> horrible baby-eating monster. We all know that. <laughs> well, speaking of that kind of thing, 
Um, I would say you guys are really between a rock and a hard place because Barrow is like, he opens his coat a little bit and he is a, uh, a revolver there at his side. And he's like, Desi, your friends have no choice. But then on the other side, uh, between you and the exit, as he's saying this, the teeth sort of lively slides its way uh, into your path. And it is a emaciated, naked, milk-white skin creature. Humanoid features, except for the entire face, is taken up by, as you can imagine, a giant set of shattering teeth. Not a sharp or anything, just human pearly whites. Clicking, clicking away as it starts making its way towards you. Uh-oh. Desdemon is going to use this opportunity to make a beeline to the door that hopefully has the cutlass behind it. Okay. I think Desdemona would have to roll flight for this one, unless you could yeah. think of some other stat that would work. No, flight's logical. Okay. Uh, that is a 10. Ooh, I would say a 10 does it. Okay. You rush over, you make it to the door, you're able to slam it open. Okay. Um, how about, let's check in with rabbits. We'll kind of go the opposite way this time. So rabbits, you have a little girl on your shoulders. Yep. You're between a crazy sea captain with the gun and a tooth-faced abomination. Um, I'm going to look at the captain. I mean, um, that, uh, my employer, I should say. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna s sort of back toward the door and say, if you, if you don't help us, we're all gonna die. Um, and I'm just gonna try to keep like backing away um, with, uh, with, with Bianca. Not, not her in the line, but, you know, keeping her behind me, but just gotta keep backing away. Um, see if I can get away out of his... Maybe out of his, out of his uh, line of sight, or just see if he'll stop pointing the pistol at me. Mm, okay. Um, I think... You thinking that's charm? Um, that, or... I'm using brain, his brains to like get to his psyche. Hmm. Well, it sounds like you're kind of trying to talk him down. If, if you okay. want to try okay. a different okay. tack, that's okay no, no. too. Charm sounds good. It's a fair shot. All right. It's a ten, so it's a fair shot. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that works. He like um. Because he, he sees, he sees well, the he, I think he has to roll a detail. Oh, sorry, my bad. So it's a five on the the die, and I have four adversity tokens. I'm gonna spend them. So yeah, that would do it. That would do it. A nine. Yeah, I was thinking a nine for this, or an eight or nine. Okay. So because he sees the teeth coming, he's like, mm, perhaps you're right. Um, I don't want my my beloved, my youngest, uh, as of now, hurt. Uh, and he, so he like kind of stands in front of you and levels the pistol. And, he's, and then he kind of glares back at you guys and he's like, don't open that door. Do not go in there and fetch the cutlass. She already went in. Yeah, but Des, ah! go get it, Des. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. By the way, I apologize to anybody that's a Catholic about the things that my character just said about Catholics. <laughs> He's an Episcopalian from 1899. They thought things like that. This is all in game. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's more of like the deadly sins are, are a Christian thing in general. So if you, even if he was a Christian yeah. of any sort. No, it's just at the mention of the Pope. Yeah. I never yeah, said I was... anything about the Pope. I just mentioned yeah, the three being a deadly sins. sin. Mm -hmm. and Man, I thought Catholic somebody said myself. something about the Pope. Nope. Oh. No, I probably, um, yeah. 
I'm yeah. not sure if like he would have responded to seven deadly sins because you're right, it's more of a general Christian thing. It is, yeah. Um, but also he's like a crazy sea captain, so. There. And he like you know he does weird rituals with a uh, around a goat sculpture in the middle of the night. Well, somebody <laughs> certainly brought up the Pope, and it wasn't Testimona. I think I think it was the captain. Did it was the, he uh, said yep. something about being about papist nonsense or something. Yeah. But mm. yeah. Right. Uh. Yeah, do do not admire this character. <laughs> He's a bad man who sacrifices children to German forest devils or yes. whatever the hell this is. No, no misaimed fandom here, please. All right, so he is going to, like, level his gun at the Tooth King. Or not the, the I'm not saying that. The tooth. At the Teeth. The tooth King. I don't know what that is. They combine together. That's even creepier. Oh, man. Yeah, they fuse. Ooh. I hope not. All right. He levels his gun at the teeth. Um, what is... I think maybe he, like, he's about to squeeze off a shot. Uh, what is Isaac doing? Hmm. Let's see. That smell is getting the cutlass. We currently have this guy right here. Hmm. But there is something that, that I want him to realize. I'm going to call in Darby for this. If that's okay with everyone. We need Darby for the skull. Well, he can move pretty fast. He is a ghost. Okay, okay. He also does have teleportation, which I can do. Well, Plus, he has telepathy, so I don't really need that him physically here. Yeah, we got three three left. So go ahead, at, go ahead, everybody else. All right. Okay. So what I want Darby to do is, Isaac really hates this guy, so he wants Darby to make the captain realize what he has done. Like, have him realize, oh my god, I've sacrificed children. And just, what am I even doing having this thing in my basement? I want him to realize that he's evil. Wow. That's really cool. Well, yeah, I know. does anybody really think they're evil? Some people do, I suppose. But I definitely think when you spend that, uh, that, energy token um i think maybe you make him like kind of see see things through darby's eyes mm -hmm. and then he kind of can uh jump from that to like realizing the how all his the victims of the errol king must have felt and a creepy song probably floats through his head realize the depths of your shame come on come all bear witness to my pain Oh, I love it because you have the love, you have the breaks yeah. of the song. That's so good. Yes, so good. Darby sings him this this uh, this song of woe, and um, he pauses a little bit. He looks over at Darby and realizes that he was putting, you know, innocent kids who were just as full of life and love as his own children into uh into the jaws of this horrible demon um so he looks back at darby who is you know sort of manifested a little bit and he's like i'm i shouldn't have i'm sorry to you and to all the others i'm sorry and then he uh levels his pistol right at the teeth and he screams like Go, get the sword. And he charges the teeth while firing his gun. It's exactly what I wanted him to do. Make a suicidal charge toward the big scary monster. <laughs> All right. Isaac, are you slipping into the corridor now? Yep. Into the door? Okay. You make your way through. Uh, Brian, you and Connor are the last ones there. You see the teeth and the captain crash together. There is a... At this point... The storm outside and the flooding has gotten so bad that the ceiling of the basement caves in. And a humongous torrent of water slams down, smashes over everything. Uh, the teeth and the captain are both washed away from view. And you and Connor are both like knocked over. It's going to take some swimming or maybe something else to make your way out of this? What are, what are you going to do? Um, 
What about my sister? Oh, well, she was with rabbits. She's with uh, rabbits, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did rabbits already make it out? I think he did. He, like, talked the captain down and slipped into the door. Yeah. Yeah. So Bianca's okay. Okay. Um, I would obviously grab Connor and um, just use everything I have to sort of get my way to the door. Um, Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that would be a grit or a brawn either way. It's just sort of... (laughs) I think it might be brawn because you're using your strength to like doggy paddle. I don't know what swims what swim moves uh, Brian knows, if any. Uh, I mean, he lives in uh, whatever that the place is that constantly floods. So I, I think he can do a little bit. Okay. So. okay. Yeah, the shallows. Yes, the shallows. That's the word. Okay. Um, with protective and a plus one to brawn that I forgot last time I did brawn. Uh, that would be a fourteen. Whoa. All right, it's tough. The current is like kind of a whirlpool type thing trying to suck you back a bit, but you push your way through it. You like scramble up. The floor is kind of caved in as well. And you and Connor are both soaked. You're getting very soaked tonight. Make your way into uh, the next chamber. So within this place, this is almost like a shrine. There is several, what's the word? Not man, uh, like statues of heroes of Barrow's past, all old, covered with dust, bearing like, you know, muskets and swords, um, looking kind of like in red coat regalia, probably before the, you know, pre revolutionary uh, New England. There's some old naval flags hung up. And at the in the center of the room, kind of like a shrine or a trophy, is the, the pickings from Captain Blake's lost ship. You can see his faded pirate flag stood up there, his banner. And there below it on a pedestal is the cutlass. However, as you come in, you see uh, the Earl King probably figured you were going for it because he is right there as well. This dark, terrible, thin figure with the antlers coming out of the head, made of living shadow, hasn't quite noticed you yet. And Darby mm-hmm. like covers his mouth, floats down, very scared. Desdemona whispers to um, Isaac, Get the cutlass. Do the, do the thing with the skull. The rest of you do that. I'm going to distract this thing. You sure about that? Yes. Well, hey, you've always known what you're doing, so I'll trust you. Thank you. Okay. So Desdemona, I think you, you said you were going to try and distract the Earl King. Yeah but she's doing it so that everybody else can sneak around. She even has handed off the Hand of Glory to Isaac. Ooh, okay. And I'll like signal signal to the rest of the guys. Welcome, get close. All right, let's have uh, Desdemona do the distraction while the rest of you guys are circling around to get to the Cutlass. Mm -hmm. Hello, Al King. I'm just yeah, known of the Barrow family. His head just like swivels 100% around and stares at you. I understand that you've, uh, my family has been quite associated with you for several years now. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your service. I hope that what we have done for you has made you happy in your own way. As much as you can be happy, I suppose. Mm. He's like floating towards you with those hands outstretched. And I suppose, well, I don't even know if you really understand what I'm saying, but at least I do, and at least it makes me feel better. 
to know that the last life you'll ever take is that of the family who's inflicted you upon this town. And perhaps you don't know what I'm talking about at all. You know, just a creature of the abyss. And still, it is only fair that the life of somebody from my family be given to you. On top of all these poor people who have suffered all for all these years. Mm. All right, Desdemona, I think you're going to roll Charm for this one. Okay. Charm. Yeah, this would be the first time she ever messes up a Charm roll. Oh, no. Uh, oh, right. well, I'm, I'm two seven. I'm going to boost it up to 10 by spending adversity tokens. Mm. Okay, a 10 is good. Okay. Because she's just trying to distract this thing long enough that maybe they'll get it. And if she's the one that dies, then she's the one that dies. Okay. She didn't want to contradict her father in front of her father. Mm. But she's... She feels a moral obligation that if somebody's going to die here, it's going to be her. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it is definitely distracted. It, like, reaches out for you. I think in a second or two, unless a friend can help, you are going to have to roll grit. Oh, I understand. Uh, but let's check in with uh, the rest of the team here. Maybe I'll, I'll start with Brian. So, you guys are sneaking around. You're getting to the back of the cutlass. The Earl King seems pretty distracted, but not 100%. What do you think you're doing? You do have... Uh, for Darby, you have two more energy tokens. Yes, two left. If you want to use one of those, you think it away, it could help. I don't think uh, my the teleportation is really going to do anything on my end, um, so I don't think I would do that. Um, let's see. So the cutlass is in front of you. Mm -hmm. The Earl King is like right next to it. Right. To, to find some way to, it is it is pretty distracted, but it's going to take a little bit of a uh, little bit of effort to grab. Oh, I was trying to get it to move towards me. Did oh, I... okay. Yeah, it's definitely closer to Desdemona, but the room is not super big though. No, I understand. Right. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'm not really sure if this is sort of my deal. Um, okay, we could check in with uh, maybe Isaac or Ravitz if you want. Uh, yeah, um, I will say that um, I'm thinking about sort of like my little brother's sort of happiness kind of a thing. And if the Earl King does get close enough to sort of get to uh, Desdemona, it would. I will actually try and grab grab the Earl King and sort of keep it keep it away from her. So I'm just sort okay. of looking. Okay, I don't think we're there just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so Isaac Ravitz, who's gonna grab the cutlass? By the way, where is Connor and all this? I think he's still with, he's in your group right now. He's like sneaking oh, around okay. with you. Mm -hmm. Looking very worried for Desi's sake, of course. Mm -hmm. He's about to like run to the Earl King himself, I think, along with Ryan. Mm. So, which one of us wants to grab the cutlass? You two as a duo, and I'll see if I can help with the distraction. Hmm, okay. Since Isaac already has the skull, or no, no, who has the? Darby, Darby has the skull. Darby has the skull. Darby has the skull. Darby has the skull. And I can't imagine have... Darby wants to attack the Earl King. You so. have, you have the hand, right? Um, I also have the blunderbuss if you want. Yeah, I. Michael did describe there as being rather a lot of weapons down here. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it sounded like from the description. Oh yeah, that's fair. It is their like kind of trophy room. Mm -hmm. And you're most definitely a better fighter than me. I only have a D four and fight. Okay, so you're gonna go get the. All right. I'll get the cutlass. 
I'll hand the blunderbuss off to you. Cool. All right. Rabbits, are you going to load fire the blunderbuss? If possible, um, yes. I will do my best to figure out the mechanics of this. Uh, it's not going to be my, my best chance of roll, but I'll, I'll definitely go for it. Yeah, I think it will be brains to figure out how to like load and fire a blunderbuss. Yeah. D8. Here we go. Eight. Ooh. Oh, roll it again. Get to roll again. Yeah, I was thinking difficulty would be like a. <laughs> Whoa, you can roll, roll it again. again. Six. Damn. So that, that was awesome. Oh, oh wow. Holy crap. Okay. So I think here's what happens. Desdemon, it's like brains moment. Yeah, just like <laughs> and all, all the calculations add up to four. Everything works. Um, it's all good. It's that um, that meme where there's like all the, you know, the numbers and digits floating around your head. So Desdemona, the Earl King's like reaching out. You can feel his hands settling on your shoulders. Just can then, I, can I have her say a thing when he's about to reach out and grab her? She quotes a tale of two cities at that point and goes like, it's a far greater thing that I do today. And that's when the blunderbuss goes off. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so rabbits, you just like unload an expertly fired blunderbuss round. It tears into the upper half of the Earl King's body. Doesn't hurt Desdemona because you aimed it so well. It like rips through the front of his skull. Um, buckshot goes everywhere and shadows like burst out and the head kind of like splits in half for a little bit. So it's totally stunned. You can see that like it's already starting to knit itself back together. Oh, Isaac. All right, I yeah, gun it for the does. cutlass. Okay. Nice job. Nice job. All right, Isaac, um, you grab the cutlass, you hoist it up. The Earl King kind of spins around, stretches out its hand. It's like blindly flailing, but it's reaching for you. Then you hear Darby cry, give it to me. All right. So you are going to have to oh. either chuck it to Darby, which will take a roll, or use one of his powers. Um, I would say that he will impulsively teleport to Isaac. Okay. Ah, all right. So that's going to be, he has one left, but that will do it. It's a better idea than just chucking a sword at <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Could be. All right, Isaac, he teleports uh, right next to you. I'll, I'll just take that. Right, he's like... <laughs> okay, here you go. All right, so how do we do this? Um, Darby holds it up and he's like, well... It's very Treasure Island. I like it, but I'm not. And then, like, his a greenish glow comes into his eyes. He holds out the sword, points to one of the far walls, which is blasted apart by cannon shot, revealing a slick, muddy stretch of, uh, not quite a tunnel, but, you know, a muddy kind of passageway leading up to the grounds. And you can see a ghostly green light coming from the skies outside. And Darby following the cutlass floats his way out. Alright. Um, not too sure what to do at this moment. I don't have a gun. Maybe I'll follow <laughs> Darby. Alright, so you head up. See if I can I help in any way. Okay, I think it's not going to be hard for you or Ravitz or Brian or Connor to do it. Even with uh, Bianca on Ravitz's back. But Desi is still sort of in the clutches of the Earl King, though it is kind of coming apart. So I think it will take a roll from her mm -hmm. to slip away. All right. I will make that flight roll. I rolled a 12 on a D12. Nice. So I'll roll that again. And I rolled an additional eight. So that brings me to a 21. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Some great rolls here. OK. I know, and she says, get behind me, Satan, and drops out of its hands and <laughs> runs up the path. Okay, so yeah, Desi, you like, yeah, you expertly maneuver around the Earl King. You dash outside, um, joining the rest of your friends. All you guys see something very unique in the sky, and Desi, you will notice something else too, thanks to that good roll. Okay. So there is 
a pirate ship floating in the sky above the uh, Barrow House. Glowing green hull, cannons run out, all made of sort of a glistening ectoplasmic substance. Undead pirates moving up and down the deck, and there above it all, you see that skull and crossbones, kind of a greenish tint fluttering in the moonlight. We'll call it the Emerald Wave. Ooh. Oh, absolutely marvelous. <laughs> By the way, I'm really dreadfully sorry about saying I'd sacrifice all of you earlier. <sighs> hey, parental issues. I know the feeling. We all have them. Hey, yes. Mm. Well, Desi, there is one more. Speaking of parental issues, hmm. as your friends, so some like some lines come down from the the deck of the ship, some like rope ladders, and you hear a, a piratical voice being like, "Right, you landlubbers, shift your hides and get aboard." So you guys can start climbing up onto the deck. Yeah, rabbits, this, you're very very far from the from the docks now. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so all aboard, I guess. Yeah. My all mama right. is in the house. I need to go get her. Um well there is so as you're kind of circling around, you do see like the door opening up and the servants, your mother, uh are like making their way out to the touring car to get out of there. But oh, you do okay. notice something else too. Your father has crawled his way out of one of those, you know, basement windows, and he's, like, crawling his way up to the lawn. He's very weak. The teeth has been at him pretty bad. He's, uh, chewed up, I guess. Hmm. But he's still alive. Um, <clears throat> and he's trying to pull himself up, and you can see, as you're going by, you see the, as you're going by, you see the teeth's hand coming up out of the, the hole, grabbing his ankle, and trying to drag him down. So it is up to you. Do you wish to help him or are you just gonna keep going? She's gonna help him. He's still her father. He might mm. be a horrible child murderer, but he's still her dad. Shut up. Um So how do you how do you help him? Um I'm trying to think of if she's got anything on her that's like particularly stabby. I mean, oh, she still has that axe. Oh, it was like, is there so, oh, there is the axe. So she is going to try her best to to chop at the, the arm of the teeth. All right, give me a brawn roll, but it won't be that hard. Okay, but she's also terrible at brawn. Yeah, I mean, you're like swinging at something that's still on the ground. <laughs> but I did roll a five, which is actually really good for her on brawn. Yeah, that does it. I mean, I was like a two or three would do it. It's like, you know, you're chopping up something that's at the ground. It's not yeah. particularly thick. Yeah, you, you like swing down, it bites into it. The fingers release and like the arm slithers its way back into the basement. Ah, get, get up, we need to, we need to run. Barrow pulls himself up and he's like, I'll, I'll go with your mother. I think you need to go to the stars. Okay, Papa, if you say so. And she's gonna go running towards the pirate ship. But when she turns her back on her father, she actually starts smiling really broadly about the fact that she doesn't have to go with her parents <laughs> and gets to ride on the pirate ship. Hey. But she doesn't want her father to see that she's overjoyed to not be near him. Mm. Uh... I think psychology's been like just been invited, but I see a lot of therapy in Desdemona's future. <laughs> oh yeah, she's going to be one of Freud's first patients, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think Freud is around. I think is he's Freud like, around in 1899. I'm pretty sure he's like he was like getting started. Freud's mm -hmm. kind of like it's like turn of the centuries when he got really popular. Yeah. Uh, when in doubt, Google. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're just ahead of the curve, Des. That's that's all there is to it. Like every teenager, yeah. like the same thing that you want. They all want away away time from their parents, but you just did it like way earlier than like any other kid. <laughs> probably. Oh, totally. You're way ahead of your time. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm just thinking of like E.L. Doctro's Ragtime, which was a great, great book. Big, big inspiration for everything here, of course. So, and Freud, Freud plays a big role in that one. So Freud would be 43 at this point, I think. Yeah, so he's probably pretty, his theories are probably pretty popular and well known. You know, he was in Ragtime. What can I say? All right. You guys all clamber up and you make your way onto the deck of the pirate ship. It's strange standing on nothing. You look down and see the dark earth and the rainy drive leading up to Barrow House, then up in the stars. Between them, spectral rigging. And you're not standing on nothing anymore. You're in a pirate ship, crewed by the dead. They dash around as they did in life, running out and loading the cannons. They aim the guns at the front of Barrow House as the front shatters, and the Arrow King and his hounds charge into the sky. Captain Blake floats down from the quarter deck and hands Darby a burning torch. I think you should do the honors, lad. So Darby takes the torch and looks at you guys. And he's like, um, I know it's safe. Well, I don't really have to worry about things like safety over here. But the Arrow King is the one who uh, did me in. I don't know if I can do this. Well, come on, Darby. You've done a lot of things already gotten this far haven't you and you're not just doing this for yourself you're doing it for everyone that has been hurt because of this thing mm. so don't worry man we got your back I'm just we trying to take revenge and take yeah, revenge he... yes just trying to give him a little pep talk if that's like a charm roll or anything uh yeah go ahead and roll a charm but it's not going to be too tricky because like I think you guys have forged a bond during this uh, your time together there. All right. Um, nine? Yeah, I think that will do it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it be a four or three for this one. Mm -hmm. So he takes the torch, floats over to the cannon, touches it to all the fuses. The cannons swivel down, and then at once they open fire. The cannonballs hurtle down this glistening spectral rain they smash into the front of the manor they they'll pretty much the whole front of the manor is a humongous chunk just taken out of it smoke rising up in a great billowing mass uh masonry casting up into the sky splinters everywhere and the earl king and the hounds against that spectral cannonade they are blown to pieces. Flecks of shadow go bouncing all over the ground and then glitter fade away and vanish. <laughs> Take that, capitalism. <laughs> oh, I love it. See, seeing that destruction, Desdemona goes, well, at least Grandpapa's house is still intact and he won't be needing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about your house, but... Mm, it was a horrible place anyways. Grandpapa's place is much nicer. Bianca's like, poo on that house. Yes, it was a rather horrid house, wasn't it? So, Captain Blake looks at you guys and is and like... And then Destiny goes like, oh, my books! Oh, no! Yeah. Connor's like... Probably my grandfather has a library. Connor says, there, there, books can be replaced. The important thing is that monster is defeated. I know. Yes. One must have a stiff upper lip. One is to be in the upper classes. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Connor's like, I I wouldn't know. No, I suppose not. And so Captain Blake, who is um this big barrel chested pirate who's got like bristly beard. He's got the tricorn pistols on him. Uh, swaggers way over to you. Looks down and says like, well now. You're 
five, you're six of the strangest party I've ever taken aboard. Mm -hmm. I guess you got one more there, the little little uh, cabin boy there flitting around. He's good, trust me. All right. Died too soon, that one. Mm. I did so many. Yeah, but, but he did. But he avenged himself. That's true. And others. That's the important thing. That's more than most of us get. So... I suppose I'll be sailing off once more. If you do need me again, talk to that little one and he'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Tell me, is there a place I can put you down? Well, that's a good point. I, I suppose, yes. You could drop us off at the uh, Honeywell Estate. Connor's like, so we'll spend the weekend there then i guess we do have another day or so before school starts oh and tomorrow's halloween it should be rather or actually, a lavish party although i do think that grandpa pa's death will put a bit of a hamper on it still he was old <laughs> yes though actually i suppose today is halloween we've been up it's uh perhaps four three or four o'clock by now so well happy halloween Happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Um, if it's not too much, if you all st still want to make it back for any festivities, that's cool. But can we take it slow? It's kind of neat up here. Rabbits is uh, at the railing, just loving the total opposite of being near the water or possibly under it <laughs> to being just at this awesome aerial view right now. Um, mm. he's, he's, totally admiring it. Like, sort of talking, but, like, staring at the same time, you know? Mm. So Blake's, like, uh, entranced, not by the sea, but by the air. Well, lad, I think you picked the right age to live in because there's no shortage of wonders that are going to be flying in the future. Oh. Is that so? Hi. All right. It's to the Honeywell Manor you go. Wait, wait, wait. One last thing. Oh. Somebody needs to go to jail. Oh. For the murders. Jail. Oh, you mean that gaggle of rich folks who did them all in? Who summoned the Earl King in the first place? If we can't prove it. I should hate to say it, but there is absolutely no proof linking them to any sort of crime. Uh, Not exactly. even if your father confesses? What do you... I feel like the people of New England are quite beyond can, convicting people for supernatural crimes consist, considering the history of Salem. No, mm -hmm. I think that my father will be getting away quite squat free from all this. Mm -hmm. I... He probably would have bought, bought himself out. That's true. Getting away scot free as you can see what the rich do. That doesn't seem right to me. Well, I... welcome to America. Mm. Mm. But perhaps, but you're young yet, lad. And there's a big future ahead of you. Perhaps if that's the path you wish to take in life, you could be the one to make that difference. In that case, after we're done from the end and everything, Winding down. Do you mind taking me out last, Captain? Of course, lad. There's something I need to do. Hmm. All right. So I would say he drops everybody else off at uh, the Honeywell Estate. Mm -hmm. uh, Butler yeah. there greets you. Of course, they know Desdemona, so they'll let everybody in. And Bianca. And Bianca. Yeah, and Bianca. And Bianca. And I think probably your family, has, their touring car has driven over, dropped off the captain. He was looking very shaken and gone totally quiet. But uh, Emojin is there. So you're able to finally go to some guest rooms inside the Honeywell estate, which is perhaps even bigger somehow than Barrow House. The Honeywell estate. What's this swanky place you go here? Oh, yes. Grandpapa's place is actually much nicer than ours. 
And with him being dead and all, I think that, well, either Uncle Theo or my father shall inherit this, and between the two of them, I'll, I would lay money on my father getting it. Mm. So, with that... Would you all mind if I spoke with my sister in private for a moment? Oh. Mm. Hey, not at all. <laughs> okay. Oh. We'll check in with that, and then we'll see what exactly Isaac wants from Captain Blake. All right, so... um. Yeah, I guess Raffit sets Bianca down, and she like she's like, yes. I want to speak to you in private, sister, about the things you do. Yes. Away from the others. Ooh, okay. And when we get to a private room, she's like, okay, so how can you do that? How is it that you were able to control things like like you did? Oh, it works better on some nights than others. I think that big spooky um, ear king was walking around and he sort of made other spirits around and I was able to ask them to do what I wanted them to do and they did. But sometimes I can't do it. Understood. So this isn't uh, you controlling things with your mind, it's you talking to spirits. Uh, yes. Okay. Though if, make- they, if they really don't want to do something, I can still make them do it anyway. Interesting. But I have to work at it. But usually I'm good at convincing them. I ask nicely. I wonder, can you do that to people as well? Ooh, I haven't tried. Maybe I could. Sister, this world is on the verge of something spectacular. And I think that between the two of us, we might be quite able to control it. Hmm, interesting. All right, we'll definitely be checking in on that thread a little bit later, I'm sure. Yep. Okay, Isaac, where does the captain drop you off? Hmm. Or what do you ask of him? My parents are out west somewhere, according to Madame March. So, I wanted to find them, you know. I think I know the reason why they left me here, but I just want to hear it from them. Well, lad, I'm not exactly... Good at hunting down missing persons, but maybe I can put you on the right track. And he'll give you a compass, and he says, This can usually find what is lost. If you're looking for something, it'll point you in the right direction. It won't do much more than that. Maybe it could help you find your mother and father. Then maybe afterwards, find what I want to do. I think only you can answer that for yourself. All right. Well, let's set sail, Captain. All right. Why do I get a feeling of deja vu from this ship? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the best best authors take inspiration from everything, including themselves. Uh, so we're taking inspiration from a previous adventure we had from Generation Shadow, for sure. Uh, but I think with that, with you and the pirate ship sailing away, that brings this three episode part one of the first bit of Kids on Bikes to a close. <laughs> so in part two, we are going to come back and 20 years or so have passed. It'll be 1929. Uh, you guys will all be adults, or you could maybe play a descendant of your character if that is something you would like to do. Or like a niece or nephew, a character who's related to them in some way. Uh, whatever, whatever you'd prefer. But you're going to be sort of in a world, still in Hallowed Hollow, but a world kind of shaped by the events of this this first three. And we're going to have three more in the 20s uh, with some new themes, some new experiences. It should be a uh, rip-roaring jazz age good time. And we'll come back to that on the very week of Halloween. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Because this is, um, yeah, I was excited about this. I love this. Um, The exploding dice tonight was intense. (laughs) I was like, holy cow. 
Oh, uh, just at the right moments too. <laughs> so that was an exciting mechanic for for me to watch. Uh, we hadn't had any dice explode until this one, and then three of us had. <laughs> and it just incredible I mean, big ones, right? I mean, we're, we were we mm were -hmm. in the thirties, and yeah, that was that was amazing. Uh, so that's that's exciting for me. So like to over succeed uh, in systems like this. So thank you so much, everybody that's been watching. And if you if you're watching this and the system's a little bit confusing to you, um, make sure and watch the ticker on the bottom. It'll tell you at least the basics. Um, and as we progress into different the new series um, and the new arcs that Michael is putting together. We'll even give you some more information on how how things are going and how characters, how their stats look and those types of things. So as you watch these arcs, you will kind of learn the mechanics of how playing um, kids on bikes also, because uh, we really, really enjoy this uh, system. It's very fun. And thanks again, Gray Mouse, for hanging out with us and chatting in there and uh, giving some very amazing opinions of what's going on and what could be going on um the bear um that was uh, that was hilarious to me so that was my fa the favorite part was the big hug um was pretty awesome so thanks everyone thanks everybody for watching uh thanks for you guys for thanks guys for playing um make sure and do um what you're supposed to do um as an american citizen uh go out there and do those things uh, i cannot encourage you more to vote if that and do it anything. safely yes. as well uh, coming from me yeah. do it do it wisely be smart about <laughs> wisely safely how yes. you're voting okay um but as we take off uh make sure until we come back in two weeks we'll be back in two weeks uh, on mm -hmm. tuesday uh until then pull up a chair and make, and make, make time, time table. the tabletop we're awesome we are so <laughs> awesome. We don't need to slow down for nope. it anymore, nope. I think. We're good now. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. All right. Good night. Good night, everybody.